Okay, next target. Hey, there's our buddy. I wouldn't stand back there. Okay, 35 degrees overcast. West southwest wind, eight miles an hour. Here's the radar. Looks like we're going to be shooting mostly with the wind. All right, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Randy, who kept asking me, when are you going to post some more videos? I told him I was waiting on a new rifle to come in and you know, finally showed up. So shout out to Randy for staying on me to get some more videos posted. Okay, so we'll just uh, shoot a uh, few groups here at the 50. See how we do. We're using FX pellets, 25 fours. Let's see if we can get about 925. Because I saw somebody else shooting them at 925. I didn't think they'd go that fast, but we'll see. After we shoot the groups, we'll go back in and we'll do uh, we'll do kind of a uh, initial impressions of this new rifle. See if you can guess what it is before we go back into the shop. A little bit windy, so we'll just see how it groups up at 50 here. See what this first shot does. 700, 12. 712, need to add a little bit more speed. Using a single shot loader for all these just because uh, I only got one mag. I haven't invested in uh, multiple magazines for this yet. 800, 91. 900, 19. First target, we're just getting set up, so it won't be too pretty. 923 923 Let's see if we can get this last shot to 925 926 926 Overshot it by one Okay, let's just uh, shoot some groups Just to see how this does I've already shot this a little bit But I'm still trying to get familiar with it just shoot a few and see what it's doing this afternoon. And we'll see how our extreme spread and standard deviation do. All right, top middle. 926. I think that one might have looped in there. 923. 928. 923. We'll do six shot groups for all these. 921. 926. All right, so that first target wasn't really anything to write home about. Although it is, it's fairly breezy, so it is what it is. 926. 921. Seems like the ribbons blowing to the left and I'm hitting to the right. 923. 926. 926. 923. So it seems like it's getting, it seems like it's getting a little bit loopy to me. Let's see if we can lower the speed a little bit. Try for 915. Slow it about 10 feet per second. Let's see how we do. Let's see what the uh, 12 shots, spread of 7, standard deviation of 2. Under 10 feet per second on the spread. That's always good. All right, let's go for uh, bottom left. And that wind's picking up a little bit. Let's see if we can shoot for uh, 915. 914. That looked like a good one. 914. 916. 916. Does it like 915 more than it likes 925? Let's see what this one does in the breeze. 916. Yeah, that ribbon goes to the left. Well, it goes right. Must be opposite up here is what it's showing down there by the target. 900. 14. Ribbon's going to the left, it's it's shooting right. But apparently it does like 915 quite a bit more than it does 925. 
get rid of these first shots. That way we can keep an eye on what our ES is. All right, next target. 912. 914. 914. 916. If there was no wind, I would be naturally shooting a little bit to the right. 900. 9. 900. 16. Hard to tell when it's breezy out. And let's just keep it here at 915 for that last target. Bottom right. 912. 914. 912. Okay, that one was definitely the wind. Ribbon up here is going solid left. And see if this hits the same place. Yeah. 914. 914. Ooh, low. I'm guessing something knocked that one down. Okay, last one. 912. See how we did? 18 shots, spread of 7. Same as the other, standard deviation of 2. Okay, let's go back in and I'll give you my uh, initial impressions of this rifle. Did you guess what it is yet? You probably did. And yes, sir, it is an FX Maverick VP model. It's got the 600 millimeter barrel and the steel air tank. 25 caliber, of course, same as the Avenger. I just wanted to do an initial thoughts and impressions. When choosing my next rifle, I wanted to compare it to the Avenger, and I thought the best way to do that was to choose a rifle with a similar barrel length. So the Avenger has a 22.8 inch barrel, and this rifle has a 600 millimeter barrel or a 23.6 inch barrel. So a little bit longer, uh, but still very, very close. Um, since barrel length is going to dictate uh, power and sometimes accuracy, I wanted something that was very similar to the Avenger. I think I tend to prefer rifles that are closer to 36 inch rather than 48 inch. So again, it's a bullpup style rifle instead of the traditional style rifle. The Maverick is fully adjustable, same as the Avenger, and it actually has two regulators instead of one, so we'll go into that in later videos. It seems like I'm pretty much only interested in the rifles that are fully adjustable instead of trying to figure out what pellet shoots best out of your rifle. You just tune the rifle to the pellet. That's most fun for me. Power range. The Avenger has a 12cc plenum. This has an 89cc power plenum. Because it has the larger plenum, it has a much greater range of power. The Avenger didn't really have enough power to shoot 34 grain pellets, and this has actually plenty of power to shoot the 34 grain pellets. So uh, it'll be fun to uh, start shooting some heavier pellets and slugs whereas we were kind of limited to 27, 28, 29, 30 grain pellets and slugs with the Avenger. Price point. This uh, is an expensive rifle. However, it is less expensive than the Shorty Compact model, which has a 300 cc carbon fiber bottle, and it's less expensive than the Sniper model, which has a 580 carbon fiber bottle and a 700 millimeter barrel. So this one is kind of right in the middle. That's kind of what I want. Online support. There is a bunch of online YouTube videos that talk about how to tune this rifle, how to upgrade it with additional accessories, how to take it apart. Um, there's just, and those videos are done by a whole number of different creators. So I, felt, I really felt like this rifle had a lot of online support if I ever needed to work on it or if I ever needed help adjusting it. Next thing is the bottle. Uh, with the Avenger, I was getting around 40 to 48 shots per fill. Typically, that was with a, a 25.4. I could get 45 to 48. 
uh, shooting about 42 or 43 pound uh, shots. Um, this bottle is 400 cc and it's a 230 bar fill and I get between 80 and 90 uh, 40 pound shots shooting the 25 fours again. So it's nice having the additional capacity. Later on down the road, I'll probably replace the steel bottle with a 580 carbon bottle and, and be over, you know, 120 um, shots with, with this rifle. So it's nice that it's upgradable. And the other thing are the additional accessories. There are a bunch of accessories. There are really nice um, bottom chassis rails, slug probe kits. There's barrel tensioning systems. There's carbon fiber sleeves for the barrels. There's just a, a whole bunch of accessories for this rifle. So if you want to accessorize it, you got so many options. So that's, that's another reason, uh, another reason why I went with the Maverick. Okay. What comes in the box? Since it's the VP model, it comes in cardboard box with foam. You get the owner's manual. You'll get a female quick coupler, which is the longer style. It's kind of a nice coupler and you'll get one magazine and that's what you'll get in the box. It's the VP model. So it is the value package model. No hard case with this. Just keep that in mind when you're thinking about which model you're going to buy. But this model is the only one that comes with the 600 barrel. And that's that was the most important thing to me. The one accessory that I did buy from the dealer while I was there, because I knew I would want it, was a Donnie FL Sumo suppressor. Um, I wanted something uh, bigger than the Tonto. I, I have a Tonto with my Avenger. But this puts out more power. I wanted something larger that would suppress uh, more power and keep it nice and quiet. Donnie FL Sumo doesn't come with the gun. You'll have to buy it separately. Okay, the other accessory that I bought right off the bat was a single shot loader from Maple Custom Products. Um, this one, as far as I can tell, does fine. You just flip it up, load it, flip it down, push your bolt back, and shoot. And it seems to be of good quality, and I've had kind of no, no issues with it. Good product, eBay, about $20. Okay, let's talk about what you need to check first on this rifle. I ran into a couple issues with it, and I just wanted to let everybody know what I ran into. Uh, first thing I ran into, we were test firing this at the distributor, and we actually jammed the rifle while we were test firing it. I jammed the rifle and I had to have one of the employees there come and clear it for me. He had to take out the barrel and get the, uh, the pellet that was stuck out of there. But the reason that it jammed was because this screw was loose. When you get your rifle, and this goes for all the other FX rifles, I think use this same magazine except the impact. Just make sure this screw is tightened down and you don't have to not gorilla tight, but nice and snug. That way it's all the way down. And um, you shouldn't have, I haven't had any problems with misloads since I tightened this down. Make sure that's tight. Uh, the other thing is, and I'll put some B-roll in here, some still pictures, is the tension screw for the fine adjustment on the power wheel. You need to put some blue Loctite on that tension screw. There's a little nylon puck underneath that screw and it, it, it puts a little pressure on the fine adjustment. The tension screw actually worked its way loose and was kind of floating around in the back of the gun and just came out of the spring cut. So when you get your rifle, make sure you adjust the tension screw to where it's putting some tension on the fine adjustment screw. Put some blue Loctite on there so it doesn't work its way loose. Um, the other thing that I did actually put a, uh, a little spring from a ballpoint pen on that fine adjustment screw, because if there's no tension on that screw, you cannot feel when you've got the Allen wrench engaged in the screw and you're turning it um, because it moves so freely in the spring cup. So I just added that spring because if you're working the fine adjustment screw back and forth a lot, it'll wear out that nylon. So that spring keeps a certain amount of tension on the fine adjustment screw and that way you can tell when you're engaged with the allen wrench and you you're turning it back and forth so just a, a note there um, something that i uh, realized when i 
was working with it and I first got it. And I think the last thing that I'll, that I'll mention is um, the, the difference in plenum size between these two rifles. It makes, it's, it makes a dramatic difference. The Avenger has a 12cc plenum. This has an 89cc plenum. The range of power you can get. To be fair, it's more than double of what you can get with the Avenger. Um, I was never really able to shoot 34 grain pellets out of the Avenger because it just it didn't have enough power. You couldn't, you know, you had to dial everything all the way up. You had to turn the hammer spring all the way in. Um, this you can shoot the 34 grain pellets and, and have it uh, run really efficiently and it does it pretty easily. Because the plenum is so much larger on this rifle, the majority of your uh, velocity changes are going to be done with the regulator, not the hammer spring adjustment, not the power wheel. With the Maverick, about 80% of the velocity will be determined by your regulator pressure, not the hammer spring. So with this gun, it's about 80% regulator and about 20 percent hammer spring to fine tune it with the avenger i always kept the regulator around 2500 psi or about 170 bar 10 12 15 foot pound range where it would run pretty nicely and you could you know you could tune that in just using the hammer spring so with this um, the range that you're going to be able to adjust with the hammer spring is only I don't know, two, three, four, five foot pounds. And the majority of, of your change in velocities are going to be done with the, uh, with the regulator and you're going to vary the amount of the pressure in the, uh, the plenum on this gun. I just thought that was that difference is, uh, is very notable on this rifle. All right. So, uh, just to finish up here, I don't typically ask people anything in my videos. I just have the, the one little note there at the end, uh, you know, like, and subscribe if you uh, like the video, but this is, this is the, probably the one time that I'm going to ask people to like, and subscribe. Um, I haven't shot this, uh, rifle as much as I wanted to. I've probably only put a couple tins of pellets through it. But that's because I've been working on some, uh, some brand new accessories for it that, uh, Brand new to YouTube, um, I haven't seen them anywhere else. So uh, next video, um, I'm gonna show you, we'll go through those uh, couple accessories that I've made for this, and they will be uh, available for sale. If you have a Maverick, if you have a Wildcat, because the Wildcat is basically the same chassis, if you've thought about buying a Maverick or a Wildcat, if you're interested in um, you know, getting into PCP rifles, and you're looking at something that's adjustable and tunable, um, tune into the next video and uh, I'll drop it in a couple days and we'll go through the brand new accessories that I've, that I've made for, uh, for this rifle and for the Wildcat. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching and uh, I hope to see you next time.